Okay, now let's first of all get your perspective on the profit taking we are seeing in the market recently. Um, like you rightly said, it's not unexpected. I mean, considering the bullish run the last uh, four weeks, one would not, and again, you keep in, keep in mind too, we're looking towards the end of the year, which ordinarily would have triggered all this kind of profit taking. So arguably, it may be on a great larger scale on account of the recent bullish run. But it's still un not unexpected in that sense. So I, I, I think it's, um, by and large, it's a trend that one would expect to happen. And again, um, again, like looking through the market yesterday, uh, if I could comment on that, yeah. there was it dipped by 0.09 percent. Again, today it went further. Went it dipped further by 0.2 percent. Now that trend of profit taking. It's not really un unusual if you look at it in that sense. But there again, well, we're looking at a market that is just coming back to life after a lull that's dragged for the greater part of the last two, three years. And um, investors have really taken a, it's taken quite a toll on the investment, on the investing uh, public. So short, this kind of spasm of, of life coming back into the market would uh, trigger off a mix of position taken by savvy investors and then some attempt to recoup losses. So I think it's, um, it's, really, it's really not, a, not a, it's kind of a healthy trend and uh, we expect to see things stabilize. Yeah, of course, I, I, I've, heard, I've heard that um, sentiment from quite a few people that the market probably needs a breather before it gets going again. But let's talk a bit about some of the results we're seeing recently from the banking sector. I think in general, while results are still quite positive, no major down, down um, negative surprises, but um, we are seeing a, de a decline in the growth rate which we saw in Q2 for some names. I mean, I, I do recall the likes of GTB. Were your thoughts on the broad, rather the broad issues that may be impacting on the banking sector today that is causing um, the slowdown in some results? Well, broadly speaking, like you said, yes, the, the results have been generally on the upward swing. The growth rate, now, um, again, we've, we've just come out of a clean, a clean out process with, the, with Amcon and um, uh, looking through CBN statistics, credit growth hasn't really been significant in the last few months. But banks have really taken more time to restructure their overall balance sheets. And if you look at it too, the, the, the culture of risk management has taken, uh, has taken center stage which would naturally mitigate the bullish trends we saw in the last um, two, two years before, two, uh, let's say three years ago, just before the crisis set in. Now, I think the, the, the industry as a whole is going through a curve, which towards, by the end of this year, we, we, we will be able to say more confidently that the recovery has taken a real strong hold in the industry. And I expect that things will, will, will begin to pick up a little bit more rapidly from that point. So that, that's my take really on the current situation of things. Of course, another thing that clearly will impact all banks is um, the level of interest rates. Um, of course, we've seen a decline in yields in the bond market. We've seen inflation also come down. So there's a view that we may even see further declines in yields going forward. Your thoughts on the impact of that trend for the banks? Yeah, um, you're quite right. Uh, we've seen inflation come down naturally and um, they're, they're still, the, the, the jury is out on the, the direction in which NPR will swing, particularly the close, towards the close of the year. There's a school of thought that the, the CBN may want to, keep it, may want to keep, it, uh, keep it constant as it is right now, but there again we just had crisis, um, an unprecedented crisis with the fl recent floods and all that in the country. And they already put uh, speculations as to the impact in the early part and middle part of next year. So putting all that in perspective, there are concerns also about possibilities of food shortages and the likes. Mm. So I would expect that the CBN in this last, in this, maybe in the last um, NPR, NPC meeting of the year, would put all those things, in the, w this will form the, the basis for the dis decisions about the NPR. Now, with, with that in mind, um, I, I, I like just touch on this a little bit. Uh, we're looking at, you mentioned the issue of the, the bond markets, the yields yeah. going down and all that. Now, 
in, in all of this, um, inadvertently, the, the, our, our, our market, our market has deepened, so to speak, because the bonds, bonds market have, come, have, have gained prominence in the last few months. Now, but with this, with the current situation of things, if inflation does go up and the NPR and CBN has to raise the NPR a little bit, would expect to see that um, naturally the, the impact on the yields will, will, will be there. So by and large, really and truly, we are at the point where it, the next one month, next few weeks of uh, the debate around the budget and all that will, be, will shape things concerning fiscal and the, and the uh, monetary policy. I expect to see that that impact you just mentioned will, will, in, will indeed play out in terms of um, the, um, the, the, the rates and the, the impact on the bond market as okay. well. Can you share a quick thought on the oil price? Um, it was holding up very strongly above $110 per barrel. Now it slipped below that um, to about $109. Um, are you beginning to get a bit concerned? Because we all know how important the oil price is to this economy. Well, it's, it's interesting you raised that point because there was, a news, there was something on the news today where the, the coordinating minister for finance raised um, the issue about... Uh, not, not so much just a dip in the price, but declining import figures from the U.S., which was our major, which is our major trade partner in that regard. And if you, if, you, if, you, if you follow through the scenario she painted, it, there's need for us to be concerned as to that development. Now, arguably, there are, there, are, there are schools of thought that suggest that, well, if that market isn't, I mean, if we, if whatever we lose there, we can recoup from other, other, other sectors of the, world, of the global economy, but it doesn't just really work like that. Um, the U.S. has accounted for significantly proportion, uh, larger proportion of our uh, oil sales. So a dip from that end will naturally, naturally have its own medium-term effect on our, on our oil prices. I, I wouldn't say that's the, that's the immediate cause of it, but like you and I, we all know that there's this volatility of oil prices that would always be somewhere in our overall basket of indices in, uh, in, discuss, in our discourse on the economy. Mm. Uh, right. That fluctuation isn't really, it, it's something that we always have to factor in all our discussions and I think it accounts for this call for conservatism in our fiscal policy.